gave up on life, losing his plantation in the process. Eventually, he regrouped and acquired, acquired a plantation for a business partner in Davao, in India, with a Japanese partner. He eventually remarried and had children, and remarried a Filipino woman, Soima Loma, including, uh, and had children, including Marie, uh, which we had again, and had children, including Maria Salome, born in 1938. For the Japanese occupation of the Philippines, his partner returned to Japan, his business partner returned to Japan, while he was sent to a concentration camp. By the time he was left, liberated, Gross was dying of tuberculosis. He, he, his continued ties to the Molina family is evidenced by the fact that he arranged for his daughter, Maria Salome, to live with Antonio Molina to study music. Perhaps Gross could be seen as the Alexander Corda of the Philippines. A Corda, who was Hungarian, was a very successful director in, in, in the United Kingdom and established himself in Great Britain, making numerous films that celebrated the British Empire in terms that his domestic audiences often adored. He was more British in many ways than the most normal gun ho Brit. Gross was poor, if you will, inside out, in that his Filipino nationalism was also anti-imperialism. In this respect, we must reflect carefully on the nature of the nation's cinema. If we only consider real American films to be those by native-born Americans, as opposed to, say, recent, often Jewish immigrants, then American film history would be drastically reduced in size. American cinema was international in its roots, as well as its orientation. Whether in the silent or sound era, the honor roll of Hollywood cinema is filled with the names of people who are born elsewhere. It's what made Hollywood cinema great, or at least what enabled Hollywood cinema to be Hollywood cinema. Why cannot one say the same for the Philippines, particularly when non-Filipinos were working closely and extensively with Filipinos in key roles? Although the American state was intent on gaining and containing the empire in the late 19th and early 20th century, as well as First. Almost 50% of Americans were anti-imperialist. If Williams Jane Bryan had won the 1896 election, the Philippines would almost certainly never become an American colony. And Wilson's Democrats thought that their candidate would quickly deliver on his pledge for an independent Philippines, which he was to do. Thank you very much sir, for the very lucid and historical, even archaeological uh, lecture about the origins and early beginnings of Philippine cinema. Now we are opening uh, this lecture uh, to questions and comments from the audience. So here is a mic where you need it.
uh, a filmmaker like Gross uh, was able to express. Um, Racine Mujeres uh, uh, wrote a wonderful um, uh, essay talking about the formation of Filipino nationalism, ironically enough, during the time of the American period. This is the time when we had our national animal, Carabao, all right? The national bird, all right? The Maya, and not yet our monkey eating eagle. The national flower, Sampaguita, and all of these national things, including our national hero. It was not a kind of a voluntary volition on the Filipinos to arrive at all of these national icons and symbols. This is where I would like us to see this nationalism that, uh, and which I will not contest, it's a great contribution to, uh, um, to